Hi! Today I would like to talk about trying to get an IDE set up for Krita. So any developers that are thinking about maybe helping out with some of the code or just want to like play it, play around with it, um, hopefully this can help you get started with going from just getting the source files and building it to actually getting it up and running and building through an IDE. So. I will be going over how to set it up with Qt Creator. So Qt Creator is, it works really well with it because Krita in general and, and Caligra already are using Qt, the Qt framework, or Qt as uh, sometimes people call it. But yeah, I only know how this process goes for Linux. I really haven't tried testing it out uh, for Windows or different flavors of Linux. So the version I'm going to be showing you is on Ubuntu 14.04. So that's that's what I know of. Probably the first thing I think kind of a prerequisite is that you already kind of have it building, uh, at least through David Revoy's article. So even though, and you can find this on the Krita website, it's a really great explanation of kind of just getting everything, the basics, just from grabbing the source and then in installing all the dependencies to get it working and then pretty much everything you need to kind of just get it going. So this kind of builds on David's article a little bit and just helps you get it going. Mm hmm. So the first thing we'll do is maybe we'll just make sure we have all the latest source. Go go to my home directory and see where I'm at and then we'll go to the source. And this directory structure is how it's recommended to set up from David's article. That's what I'm going to be using here. Currently in the currently in the source file, so we'll just we'll just pull the latest and make sure we have everything up to date. See if anything's changed. Looks like nice. Something changed. App data. Okay, cool. So now we're completely up to date. Just in case that you've probably have like a some of the folders stuff in it with the build folders we're actually gonna just delete that because our IDE is gonna we're gonna try to just do it so our IDE can generate all that stuff on its own so we'll just go back in the Kiligra we'll go into build okay looks like I already cleared that out if there is anything in there you can delete it uh, same with the install folder okay cool so now yeah we got it we have the source code all is all up to date and then everything else the folder structure is there and it's all empty so the next thing we will do is download Qt Creator I've already done it but it's it's a pretty pretty simple thing to get um, let's see oh let's get this I know on Ubuntu it's pretty simple just to use this package manager. You can wait for it to load and then you can just go something like Qt, Qt Creator. So these are all the ones that I have installed. They're probably not installed by default. Yeah, you could just kind of see what I have on here and then you can install install that stuff. Now, if you're on a newer version of Ubuntu, to even get Kiligra and Krita, I'll just call it Krita, Krita even though it's part of the Kiligra set. If you want to get that to install on newer versions of Ubuntu, you really have to have the the Qt 4 framework, where the newer versions of uh, Ubuntu are using Qt 5. To make sh just to make sure you can use a K default yeah so like by default it's gonna have five on here 
So you're going to want to make sure you have four because that's what currently uh, Krita needs to be able to build everything with. The only thing, I, other thing I, I downloaded was this cute cho chooser, which allows you to switch what version of Qt it uses to compile everything. I might have uninstalled the 5. Yeah, you definitely need Qt 4 for it to work right. Yeah, once you have all of those installed, can just start it up. Okay, so we'll just we'll start it there. And if, I mean, the first time you see, start it up, you won't see it. So you can just you might have to type this, and then it just should show up here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open the project. We open the project. We can just uh, navigate to the folder, which I actually made a shortcut which it's really just my home, my username, KDE4, source, and Caligra. This is where all the files are at. You can actually generate everything that you need, that Qt needs, by going to the CMake lists, and just opening that. What that's going to do is going to run the make file, and it's going to start auto-configuring everything. Now, it's doing this, but it's actually not doing it how we want to do it. Mostly because there if you especially if you follow David's article, there's a lot of special configuration options you need to set for it to work correctly. This thing is running everything. I think it's done, whatever. We will we're gonna change some settings in this to make sure that everything's building correctly. We go to the projects area make sure we're on the build part of it and then we're going to actually I just put a, put a text file we're going to copy and paste it it's source build I've never seen this before oh see we need to I think when it was auto adding it, it created something we don't want. So, let's see. Let's see if it created something. What is it doing that? An in-source... Detected an in-source build. Home Scott Caligra. Which prevents shadow builds. Clean your source directory. Huh. Let's see, I wonder what it made. So let's uh, go to the command line. We can just go in it and just do a uh, CD. We'll take a look in the source and see what it what it's making. Source, Caligra, get status. Looks like it changed those files on us. So we'll just do get reset. Hard. So get status. Oh, it didn't like that. Get reset hard. Hmm. So maybe See what can we do? Why is it doing that? Um, so let's just see what it's building. Let's just kill these files. See, make cache. So it created that. It created that. See, make cache. Dot text. See, make files. See, make temp. Dart configuration. Start configuration, CMake uninstall. CMake uninstall. Where's that at? CMake uninstall. That's CMake. So we'll just, we're going to kill those files. Status. Okay. So now we're, now we're clean.
So let's try to. Hmm. Let's, uh, we'll clean all. Try this one more time. Okay, so it didn't do it that way. Let's uh let's close out of this. Maybe I had something left over. Caligra. There, so it's doing a bunch of stuff. So it's letting me do it now, so let's just wait till it's done and then we'll try this again. Yeah, so obviously, yeah, if you have that problem, you can just follow that. So we'll just change this from KDE. Change that to build, and then for the arguments, we'll use a lot of David settings. The only thing that we need to do differently is, and it likes to rebuild every time we change things. So just okay. You'll notice that these are using relative URL links now. For some reason, it likes to use these anytime you have any type of path. It'll pretty much fix it whenever you do that. Looks like it's trying to do it again. Yeah, when you first set it up it's kind of annoying, but okay. Okay, so it thinks it's done. I think we're okay here. figure this is exactly what David had and then the only thing that's different is is just that with those relative URLs and then the other only other thing is you do the make you just do the make uh, like the original steps did and then we're gonna actually add another make step which was the install and that's going to I guess finish off and make it so that we can use it that's all of the build settings we need. Then we can just collapse that back up. And we're going to go on the run settings. It's going to be after it builds, it'll so we can launch Krita directly. So when we do this, all we need to do is we're going to add in the deploy step, and we'll just we'll just call that Krita. And that's that should that should be all we need because it's automatically going to be in the build directory. And then it's gonna run the Krita, Krita program. That should be all we need. I don't like how it's doing that. I think we changed it. I think when it was rummaging around and trying to rebuild every time it was doing that. I'm actually gonna just delete this stuff. There, and then so we got so that's that's that should set up all of our building. So then that, if we go to this build and you hit run CMake, it should generate all the correct build files that we expect it to. Configuring done. So da 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 da. It's working there. Next thing we can do is just try to build it. Just building it is simple as, and actually, there's there's a different, a few different ways to do it. You can build it here, which just builds it, or you can run it, which when you run it under the hood, it builds it, and then it, then it actually tries to launch the application. What you can do is we're going to start building it, and then I'm just going to, I guess, show some nice things about this cute creator IDE to see what's going on. It's actually building it. But you have to go in this compile output. 
So then this is when it's doing all of its work. And you can see as it's building everything out, it's showing issues that are coming up, which a lot of times there are alert uh, warnings, which if it's just a warning, it's going to continue successfully. Yeah, just because there's those doesn't mean it's going to really stop anything. One nice thing about doing it this way, first doing it in the terminal, is when you do it in the terminal, you only have so much space allocated in the terminal. So if there's a bunch of errors after enough lines of code go by with it giving you giving you information, you slowly start to kind of lose all of your these errors that come up. I guess it's not as important as that much here because it also keeps track of them right here. So in a way it's a lot it's kind of nice. So you really almost don't even have to worry about the errors that come out here. So one nice thing about being able to build it from here. And then as it, there's issues, you can obviously it it'll tell you what it is and if you double click it, it'll take you right to the the source file. And uh yeah, another great thing is whenever we did the 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 CMake and we did the build files and we open the project, we actually get a lot of uh, helpers to help us find stuff. So if you hold down control and anything gets underlined, that usually means it has some type of definition that you can go to. This one does this one has pretty generic stuff in it, but like this function here, if you double click it should uh come on should take you to the uh maybe it doesn't like to do it whenever it's building but it'll usually jump you to wherever you need to be so that's pretty helpful especially with classes and finding out where it needs to go Let's see if that one works okay oh there we go maybe yeah the other one maybe that was that was part of the definition maybe i but yeah, that's that's pretty nice doing that. And then you can switch between files. And then for some reason, if you want to close one of these files, you can do that way over here with the X button. You click that, that's pretty cool. At this point, you're just waiting. It takes a while. I mean, I have I have about eight cores on my computer. It doesn't. I mean, it still just takes a while. Maybe we will come back whenever it's done building. So we're back. It finished. Looks like it finished okay, but because I just built it, it's not gonna actually run Krita. So uh, let's just try to run it now. Now it should do it quite a bit faster, just because it's already built everything, and it sees that nothing's changed. So because of that, it can it can kind of fly through this the next time it builds, so it kind of caches everything it builds. Oh, here we go. Here's Krita. It's coming up. So, yeah, there's a lot of these resource issues that come up I've noticed a lot, but they don't seem to really give any problems with it. So, yeah. So that's it. So it's pretty much working. It's everything you need to do, and then I mean, from here you can, uh, yeah, keep going. Obviously, there's some looks like some errors whenever it closed, but yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. So yeah, the one nice thing, the, the nice thing too, you can anytime you you have results, and if you want to just like wipe them out, you can just hit this button. I don't know what it is, but it kind of clears stuff out. So yeah, at this point, it's really just a matter of you monkeying around with code, and then you can kind of go from there. So yeah, hope this has been a good launching pad for you I guess getting started and getting better at it uh, I'm sure there's a there's a lot more to it with the code and how everything works but yeah hopefully this will get you going in the right direction